Does the order of transformations matter? We're at 9.7b, and we have 13 previous videos for Chapter 9 that are linked in the geometry playlist in the description if you need them. In Lesson 9.4, we learned that we can have a composition of transformations as one transformation follows another. And we discussed glide reflections, which is a composition of a translation and a reflection across a line parallel to the translation vector. So, does the order we do these transformations matter for the outcome of the final image? The answer is sometimes yes. So, for our glide reflection, we're going to translate negative 5, the length of the vector, which is right here. And then we're going to reflect it across the x-axis that's parallel to the vector. We start in quadrant 1 with our little blue triangle. We translate it negative 5, the length of the vector, to this pink one. That's the translation. Then we reflect it, which is the green one, to quadrant 3. And we get these as our ordered pairs for A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. Now we're going to do the other way around. We're going to reflect across X, which is going to put us here with the green one. Then we're going to translate it to negative 5, the length of the vector, which is going to be this pink one for the translation. We end up with these as our ordered pairs for A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. What we get is, whether we translated then reflected, or reflected and then translated, we get the same ordered pairs for our final image. They're both in quadrant 3 at the same location. So, for translations and reflections, like these glide reflections across a given axis, the order does not matter. Now let's try doing a 90 degree rotation and then a reflection across the x-axis. So remember, for x, y, when we reflect, we learn this in video 9.1a, we do the inverse of x and y. If we rotate, we use the inverse of y and then x. We learn that in video 9.3b. So we're starting in quadrant 1 with our little triangle right here, and he rotates 90 degrees to here. Then he reflects across the x-axis and ends up in quadrant 3. And we have these for our ordered pairs for A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. Now here, we're going to try reflecting across the x-axis, then rotating the 90 degrees. So we're doing it the other way around. So we start with our little blue triangle in quadrant 1. We reflect across the x-axis to get this green one. Then we rotate it 90 degrees and end up back in quadrant 1. So for the first one, rotating and then reflecting, we were in quadrant 3 when we were finished. Reflecting and then rotating, we end up in quadrant 1 again. The ordered pairs are different. So, for rotations and reflections across a given axis, the order does matter. When our rotation degrees are positive, we rotate counterclockwise, don't we? And when it's negative, like a negative 90 degrees, we rotate clockwise. So that's going to put us in a different quadrant if we're reflecting into a different quadrant. What happens if we rotate 90 degrees and then translate negative 5, the length of the vector? So remember, again, for x, y, our rotation is going to be the inverse of y and then x. That was that 9.3b video. So we start in quadrant 1 with our little blue triangle. We rotate it 90 degrees, and it's right here in quadrant 2. When we translate it negative 5, we end up down here in quadrant 3. That's the length of the vector. We have this for our ordered pairs. Now, what happens if we start in quadrant 1 and then translate first? Now we're in quadrant 4. When we rotate it 90 degrees, we end up back in quadrant 1 again, just like the last one we did. So, for rotations and translations, order does matter. And in the end of the video, I'm going to have a nice little box with all the notes that you need for this. Now let's try a reflection across the y-axis, then a dilation with a scale factor of 2. So we start in quadrant 1 with our same little triangle. We reflect across the y-axis and get this green one. When we dilate it with a scale factor of 2, we multiply it times 2, and we get this nice big blue one in quadrant 2. 
these are our ordered pairs for a double prime, b double prime, and c double prime. 0, 8, negative 4, 0, and 0, 0. Now if we try dilating first with a scale factor of 2, then reflecting it across the y-axis, we get our little triangle, ABC, is right here in quadrant 1. We dilate it with a scale factor of 2, so now it's this blue one. When we reflect it across the y-axis, we get this triangle in quadrant 2. And these are our ordered pairs for A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. And you can see they're exactly the same. We ended up with the same size triangle in quadrant 2 with the same ordered pairs. So for reflections and dilations, the order does not matter. Now what happens if we try rotating 90 degrees and then dilating with a scale factor of 2? So we start in quadrant 1 with our little black triangle. We rotate it 90 degrees into quadrant 2, so it's the purple one. When we dilate it with a scale factor of 2, we end up with this big blue triangle. And for A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, here's our ordered pairs. If we do it the other way around and dilate by a factor, a scale factor of 2 and then rotate it 90 degrees, we have our little black triangle in quadrant 1. We dilate it scale factor 2, so it's the blue one. Now when we rotate it 90 degrees, we're here with these as our ordered pairs. And if you notice, we have the same ordered pairs whether we rotate it 90 degrees and then dilate it or dilate it and then rotate it the 90 degrees. We're in the same spot with the same ordered pairs. Which means, for rotations and dilations, the order does not matter. So what we have is, the order does not matter if we're doing a translation and reflection, like a glide reflection. And it doesn't matter if we do a reflection and dilation or a rotation and dilation. But it does matter if we're doing a rotation and reflection or a rotation and translation because the rotation will move the figure to a different quadrant depending if it's done first or second. Now some of you are going to learn this in high school geometry and some of you aren't going to learn it until calculus. But we've learned in 8.6a that the vector, that's this little harpoon looking guy, tells us the direction and length, that's the magnitude of the translation. Well, we can write vector notation as a v equals, and then we have these brackets, and there's two numbers, a top one and a bottom one. Well, the top number tells us to go left or right, so if it's negative, if you look here, if it goes negative, that means we're going left, if it's a positive, that means we're going right. That's what the top one means. The bottom one tells us to go up or down. So if we have a negative number here, it means we're going to go down. If it's a positive number, it means we're going up. And if it's a zero, it means we're not going to do either. We're just going to go left or right, aren't we? In this case, we're going to go left by five. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about dilating solids. So that would be like a cylinder or a prism. And some of your textbooks are going to call them pancakes and cakes. The pancakes would be a 2D figure, and cakes would be a 3D figure. Then we're going to move on to chapter 10, and we're going to start talking about area. As I always say, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you're doing well and able to follow along. You now have a reminder of what a glide reflection is, you now know that it does matter if we do rotations and reflections or rotations and translations because we're going to end up in different quadrants. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Bye.